Hey everyone, this is Tim from VisionaryDigitalMedia.com and in this video, I'm going to make a moto vlog on a snowmobile. I'll be shooting this video on three different cameras. The DSLR I'm recording on now, this GoPro, and this DJI Mavic drone. In this video, I'll show you how to set up these three different cameras to record in a KineMaster friendly format. Then I'll talk about three different ways to get that footage into KineMaster. Finally, we'll talk a little bit about frame rates and using the speed control in KineMaster. But first, let's ride. Hope you enjoyed that short but sweet little glimpse at snowmobiling in the Wisconsin North Woods. That video was edited 100% in KineMaster, and I've got the timeline here to prove it. So now I want to show you how I set up those cameras and got the footage into KineMaster. Let me start out with the drone. I'm in the DJI Go app now, and in the camera settings, there's an option to choose the video format. For editing in KineMaster, you want to choose MP4. Next, you want to look at resolution and frame rate. Your options here depend on the capabilities of your phone. 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second should be a good baseline for compatibility with KineMaster. If your phone isn't able to handle 1080, try bumping the resolution down to 720. On the other hand, resolutions up to 4K are supported on some more powerful devices, so make sure to experiment and see what works for you. The same goes for frame rate. 30 frames per second is a safe bet but some devices can handle footage shot at 60 frames per second. I'll tell you why that's useful a little bit later. For now, I want to set up my other cameras at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. So here's what that looks like on my Canon DSLR. And I have the GoPro set up the same way with ProTune turned off. Once you've set up your cameras and recorded your video, you'll need to transfer that footage to your phone. Some cameras have wireless transfer abilities, like the DJI Mavic, so for my drone footage, I'm simply going to transfer that over wirelessly using the DJI Go app. For my GoPro footage, I'll use a card reader that is designed to work with a mobile device. I'll pop the card out of the camera and into the card reader. This method is my favorite because it's such a fast way to transfer the files. Then I'll connect the card reader to my iPhone. Once connected, you'll see an option to import your files on the screen. Choose the videos that you'd like to transfer and then tap Import Selected. You can follow a similar process on Android. In this case, I'm using a Lexar USB-C card reader and connecting it to a Google Pixel. I can access the files by swiping down from the top of the screen and tapping Lexar USB Drive. Select the files you want to transfer and then copy or move them to your device. If neither of those options work for you, transfer your files to a computer first using an SD card or a USB cable. Then transfer the files from your computer to your phone. For an iPhone, use iTunes. Tap the device button. Then select File Sharing. Select KineMaster from the list of apps, and then click Add File. Navigate to the files from your camera, select the files you want to transfer, and then click Open.
To transfer files to an Android device, you can use the file browser. Open the camera storage and the internal storage of your phone. I'll choose the download folder. Then, click and drag over the files that you want to transfer. You could also use online file storage, such as Google Drive, to transfer the files to your phone. On an Android device, you can even access your Google Drive directly from the media browser. Once you've imported the files to your device, you can edit the video in KineMaster like you normally would with video that was shot on your phone. All of the files will be accessible from your media browser. I have to say it was a lot of fun editing in KineMaster with footage from all of these different cameras. And there's really nothing too complicated about the edit. One technique that I did use that's popular in action sports is mixing slow and fast motion. This is where the frame rate that I mentioned earlier becomes important. In this sequence, I speed up the footage as the music starts to build energy. Later down the timeline, I use slow motion for emphasis. Here's the clip at regular speed, and then slowed down, and then regular speed again. Let me jump over to another timeline and show you how I made those edits. So here's a clip I used that was shot at 30 frames per second. As I'm flying by these snowmobiles, I want to speed up the footage as the music picks up. To make that happen, I'm going to split this clip in two. And on the second clip, I'll use the speed control to speed up this footage. Now it looks as if the drone started to pick up speed right at that moment. Now on this shot, I wanted to slow down the footage and crop in during the middle of the clip for emphasis. To do that, I'll make a couple of splits near the middle of the clip. Then I'll tap to select this chunk in the middle, and I'll use the speed control to slow this down to 0.5. Now this footage was shot at 60 frames per second, so what I've done here is slow it down to 30 frames per second. That way, the motion will still be smooth, but the playback speed is cut in half. The other thing I did on this clip is crop in a little bit. All right, let's play that back and see how it looks. Okay, that's not too bad. I think it would be a little better if I just trim this clip a little bit. And let's try that again. Okay, one last thing I can show you is how I made this flicker transition. So if you look at my timeline, what I have is a video layer with a flicker overall animation and a transition on my primary timeline that's set to fade through white. So now let me remove this and show you how I set it up. I'll change the transition to none, and then I'll delete this video layer. So here it is with a regular hard cut. Now to set up the layer with a flicker, I'll select this video layer and extend it over the previous clip. Then I'll listen to the music to see where I want the cut. So I want to split this clip right about here.
Then I'll adjust the in and out points of these two clips. On this first clip, I'll set the overall animation to flicker. It might be helpful here to zoom in on the timeline using a pinch to zoom motion. Let's play that back and see how it looks so far. And it looks like I need to adjust the timing a little bit. And the last step is to add the fade through white transition. I'll tap this white box between the two clips, tap on classic transitions, and then choose fade through color. Tap on the colored circle to choose a different color. I'll keep mine at white. And now I'll play back the final video one more time so that you can see how those edits all came together in the final piece.